All right, so we're kind of taking a, a bit of a diversion. So we're going to, um, instead of proceeding on with uh, relativistic, relativistic dynamics and talking more about the relativistic energy, and the word that I didn't, didn't use last time was um, the, the rest mass, uh, which is ultimately, the, so just long story short, at the very end of last class's lecture, we, we developed an equation that said uh, E naught squared equals PC squared minus E squared. Um, now, one correction I did need to make, and, and by the way, check that to make sure that's, that's consistent with what I'd said, but I'm, I'm all positive it was. Uh, but one correction I needed to make, um, I, I mentioned last time that there's kind of two competing conventions uh, in relativity. One is we use time as the, the negative component and space as the positive. Um, that's typically what I'm used to. Our book and other sources use a flip version of it. They treat time as positive and space as negative. Long story short, I derived this equation using my metric. To be entirely proper, I, if I chose my metric, I should have added a negative sign to the front just to make things come out properly. Um, now that's because when you take the square root of the right-hand side, this actually will end up being a negative answer. I don't want to go into why. But um, essentially, this thing should be greater than that. And so what you end up needing to do is, uh, sorry, this is smaller than that, I mean to say. So what you need to do is just flip the sign of everything on the right-hand side. Um, the, the equation ends up looking like this. If you just add each of those to either side, it ends up looking like this. E squared equals PC squared, that should have been that, plus E naught squared. I don't want to go any further than this. The, bo the book does a little bit, but I, di I, I did want to make that correction here because this is very important, and we will come back to this. But this almost looks like a Pythagorean thing, which is nice, and we'll put names and we'll attach you know, some meaning to each of these uh, uh, in our next lecture. But I just wanted to make that correction there. Um, okay, so anyway, that was based on the relativistic energy there. And the last thing that I, I connected to here is the invariant mass. But again, I'm going to postpone any further discussion of that. So um, basically today, though, we're, we're going to kind of skip. Um, we'll come back to the dynamics. And we're going to go back to the last couple parts of just relativistic kinematics, um, the twin paradox. And this is a great time for us to introduce the basic concepts of general relativity, which is awesome. And one step... Yeah, three or four steps higher up in the, in the ladder of mathematical difficulty and just pure mind-blowingness. Um, so we'll at least give the conceptual like, overview of that. And then the last thing I want to talk about is, like I'd said, the, um, one of the basic fundamental disagreements between Galilean or, or Newtonian and Einsteinian mechanics was the fact that if you try to apply Galilean transformations to electro electromagnetism, it no longer works. So we're going to revisit that problem, and we're going to explain exactly how, how relativity solves it. And by the way, this is essentially Einstein's original motivation for even inventing relativity, if you will. That basically, he saw this disparity, and he saw that there was a natural resolution by invoking Lorentz transforms. And that's where his original 1905 paper came from. And that's also why it's called On the Electrodynamics of Moving Bodies, because it's literally the solution to this. So we're going to get into a slightly lower level uh, presentation of that.